At 3.30, we got Purdue. First unranked matchup of our 3.30 window. We're going to have two of these. Purdue, who's 2-3. and three. Trevon, Iowa, who's 4-1. and one. Iowa favored by two points on Peacock. Hudson Card for the Boilermakers has gone 111 and 174. Known for 1,244 yards. Five touchdowns, three interceptions. Tyrone Tracy Jr. had 46 carries for 288 yards and five touchdowns. And Deion Banks has had 20 catches for 377 yards and four touchdowns. Cade McNamara for the Hawkeyes has gone 46 and 90, thrown for 505 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions. LaShawn Williams had 37 carries for 211 yards. And Eric Alls had 14 catches for 183 yards and two touchdowns. And herein lies the rub, right? Cade McNamara, which, I, to be fair, was not playing his best football, right? 505 yards through four, like, a half games is not good, right? Like, it's barely averaging over 100 a game. It's not a great pace. But Kate McNamara went down with a season-ending leg injury last week, and that means backup quarterback for Iowa is going to have to try and step in and keep Iowa in playoff eligibility. By the way, Purdue leads the series all-time 50-40. Last game went to Iowa in 2022, but Purdue has won four out of the last six times these teams have played. So I think what's really interesting here, if you're Purdue and Iowa, right, and it's that uh, who has the more competent offense, right? Purdue has had an explosive offense for the past couple of weeks, right? Hudson Card has been able to get the ball down the field. Purdue is an explosive offense, but he's made a lot of mistakes, as his interception to touchdown ratio shows. Five touchdowns, three interceptions. He's fumbled a good amount of times. And this was part of the reason they lost to Syracuse and got eliminated from playoff contention. Obviously, like a week after that, they got destroyed by Wisconsin. And that, that was in large part because of Hudson Card. But this isn't, like, a bad situation for Purdue. Purdue is arguably the best offense on that side, outside of, like, maybe Wisconsin. Um, Hudson Card has been competent at quarterback. He's actually thrown some nice passes, which is not something you can say about the vast majority of quarterbacks on that side of the Big Ten. Can't say it about Iowa's uh, quarterback, even with Cade McNamara starting. But, like, you, you can't say it about Northwestern. Nebraska doesn't have a super competent offense. Illinois definitely doesn't. And Minnesota's offense is anemic. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But Iowa's defense is really good. I think this is it possibly being really interesting, right? Purdue's offense is dynamic, but they make mistakes. And what does Iowa do is take advantage of those mistakes on defense, right? They force a lot of turnovers. Purdue gives a lot of turnovers. So you'd think that that would cancel. They would like that would just mean Iowa is going to destroy him, but Iowa's offense has been able to unable to do anything, and Purdue's defense has gotten better as the season's gone on. Now, they're still going to make a good amount of mistakes. This is what happens when you play a lot of man-on-man -man defense. Again, mistakes are going to happen, but Iowa's play, defense is playing really well. Purdue's offense is turning the ball over, but I think Purdue's offense just as a whole has the capability of putting up way more points than Iowa's can. I think there's a limit to what Iowa's can. Whatever it is, I think I'd hit the under of whatever the over-under is. Give me Purdue, though. I like Purdue to go and win on the road and eliminate Iowa from playoff contention.